These oh! are the 20 craziest plays in the NFL this season. And Elliott puts the toe on it, and the kick is good! Fires into the end zone! Touch! Touchdown! And first, another player's helmet helps someone pull off a crazy play. Carr looking deep, and it is juggled and caught! Touchdown! Olave! Ball really went off dude's head, and he still somehow caught it. But number 19 is even crazier, because a player pulled off an NBA move to score. Just, just watch this guy, right? Sam Gano, the veteran, 36 years old. Great breakthrough by Thomas, who blocked it. And Iguodala, and he has he stays in bounds, and the Cowboys special teams get the first score of the year. Man's really Matumbo blocked the kick. Mountain Mahas. Then completely laid out the kicker just so his boy could return it all the way. But that play only happened because it started with a kick. Number 18's craziest play happened when a team pulled off a trick. Usually, the Eagles are always whipping out a play they're most famous for called the Tush Push, which is simple really. It's just a quarterback sneak with some extra players hitting him from the back. Ooh, the play was already unstoppable whenever they needed a few yards or were close to scoring touchdowns. But during a game when they only needed one yard, when every single person watching the game thought they were calling that play again, they tricked everybody. Gonna sneak it here on third down and one. Or make it look like that. And then a trick play off the top of the high school quarterback. Whips it downfield to Devontae Smith. Uh, <laughs> now, all right, all right. at least that play was planned. At number 17, a player's craziest play happened on accident. I was like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing on this play. Like, this is not, I'm not supposed to be in. And it wasn't even just him, though. Nobody really knew what was going on because their coach called the wrong passing play. So the quarterback changed the play to a simple run just so the play didn't completely backfire. But that's when something happened that nobody was expecting. Like they're starting to, anything could happen. The way they're playing, it's showtime. As Montgomery gets into the secondary. He's inside the board. He's got a blocker up ahead. David Montgomery's going the distance. That trip was so nasty, it really made three dudes run into each other. That play turned into the Lions' longest rushing touchdown in over a decade, even though their coach admitted it only happened because of a mistake. Believe it or not, coaches mess something up every once in a while. Players made it right, and uh, it's a sign of a good team. Well, I guess he's lucky it all worked out, and that messing up didn't cost him or his team anything. Unlike the crazy play at number 16, that led to someone losing their job. Unfortunately, I won't be there this week. I was just fired. As you can see, it was already a blowout, so things can't get much worse than that, right? The second down and 13. Oh, baby. Unbelievable. Jack Jones. They do it again. Oh, my God. Man's damn near the rawest interception I've ever seen. And that play, combined with the Raiders beating them by the most points they've lost by in franchise history, was so embarrassing that the Chargers coach literally got fired. I'm sorry, you're fired. Get out of here. But honestly, that's something I could have seen happening. But I never, ever thought I'd see a crazy play like a number 15. Receiver. Make the give over the top. The flick into the air. Sheriff Field drags his feet. Touchdown. <laughs> Man's really made one of the craziest catches all year, all because he took another man's tip. But that play only tied things up. At number 14, a player's craziest play won his team the game. And it's the game! <laughs> that play. Ethan Evans, the punt, Ravens set to get good field position here. Tylen Wallace from the 25. Tylen Wallace breaks out of a tackle, takes it down the sideline. All those broken tackles, barely staying on his feet, and front flipping for a walk-off touchdown? No wonder why after the game, his entire team got him wet and were acting like fools. But they were only lit because they won. Not every crazy play this season was a good thing. At number 13, Justin Jefferson's worst play led to another team's craziest. And I'm gonna show you that, plus a whole lot of other crazy plays from this season. But before I do, I just have to tell you about something that's gonna change how you use the internet forever, and also the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. Surfshark VPN has a ton of benefits that'll change how you surf the web. It allows you to trick your devices into thinking it's in another country. 
and doing that not only keeps your browsing more secure and safer, it also opens up a new side of the internet that you never even knew existed. Like, I'm talking about exclusive libraries of content on streaming services like Netflix, and it also allows you to watch sports streams that are only being shown in certain countries. But my personal favorite features are that seeing as Surfshark has over 3200 servers available in 100 countries around the world, you can even watch YouTube with no restrictions. And cause I personally use it whenever I'm hunting down hard to find footage to create these masterpieces of videos for you, I'm even gonna help you get in on the action. Right now if you sign up on Surfshark using my promo code, not only will you get an extra 3 months free, there's also a 30 day money back guarantee. Like I said, either use my promo code on screen, or I'll even put a link in my description to make it as easy as possible to come surf with me. But anyways, back to when Justin Jefferson's worst play led to another team's craziest. Now, at first, this was only seeming like something good. And Cousins, deep, and it's pulled in, and the ball comes out. Until it was reviewed and replay showed that Jefferson fumbled into the end zone for a touchback. And even though he was close to scoring, it instantly gave his opponents the ball. Shaking my head. And with enough time to make a few plays, it eventually lined things up for the longest field goal of the season <clears throat> so far. I can blame him. 61 yarder is on its way and it is good. Yeah, 61 yards. Even Jefferson's face proved he knew it was all his fault. But that wasn't even the craziest kick of the season, which you ain't ready for yet. We'll get to that in a bit. First, I gotta show you number 12, where a player did something nearly impossible. Wilson looking down the field and it is intercepted! Patcher 10! Okay, that play was damn near a glitch. I don't even know how he intercepted that. But what else besides a video game type of catch can you expect from a man whose initials are PS2 and he rocks a PS2 controller chain? Speaking of virtual games though. <laughs> at number 11, a player's craziest play came when he tried changing Madden forever. This is Lil Jordan Humphrey. Yeah, that's his actual name. He ain't a rapper. He's a young NFL player who was a little disappointed in his career so far, and especially at his rating in Madden being just a 66 overall. Yeah, Mans was ass before he pulled off his craziest play. Down the run. Pretty amazing run by Lil Jordan Humphrey. He's still on his feet inside the 10 of the 5. Lunges toward the goal line. Touchdown, Broncos! I already know the only thing Mads was thinking about the entire time is what he was gonna do next. After that play, he instantly whipped out his Twitter fingers and told Madden to boost his ratings by tweeting, Hey, at EA, it's about that time. Now, regardless of what Lil Dude wanted, I just hopped on Madden myself to see if they listened, and unless my eyes don't work, his overall didn't go up a single point. Come on, guys. But alright, whatever. Maybe Madden will do something better for the guys in our top 10. Cause these plays are on a whole other level of crazy. Like the craziest catch of the season that set an unbreakable NFL record. Or the play that only happened cause of a deadly plane attack. But before we get to those, at number 10, Mike Evans wrote a dude? It's coming. Oh, what a catch by Evans and he stays up. One-handed grab. One-handed and dude's ass was above his opponent's head. Like what? That was crazy. And on top of him riding a dude for one of the best catches this season, it actually helped his team. Unlike number nine, that's the worst interception I've ever seen. Mullins pressured again, and he gets dropped by BJ Hill. Did he lose the ball on top of it? The refs say yes, it is a turnover. Okay, uh, what the hell was that? Instead of just taking the sack, like my girl does. Boo! Mance really did all of that, but that was only one crazy play. At number eight, two crazy plays happened at the exact same time. Two, when you have all these different injuries. Second and three. Oh, rolls up in the air, and it's intercepted off the deflection. <laughs> Wait a minute, dude really caught that just to get hit so hard it created a fumble, uh, or interception, or fumbleception? I don't even know, man. But what I do know is that number seven is even crazier, because this guy's craziest play involved his ball and only a few inches. See if Prater still got it in him from 62, a line drive. Oh, he hit it! All right. I don't even know what was crazier. The fact that dude really hit the longest field goal of the season from 62 yards away, or that he was only a few inches away from missing. See babe, a few inches never stopped this guy. A anyways, at number 6, Keenan Allen's play wasn't only crazy. Nah, it got him compared to some of the greatest legends in NFL history. Keenan was on pace for a crazy record when this happened. 
Herbert floats it. Allen! What a catch! <laughs> yeah, you should have seen my face when dude made that catch. That's not only one of the best catches this season, but damn near of all time. Also, that play put Keenan's receiving yards over 10,000 in his career, which got him into an exclusive club with some of the best receivers ever. Mance is really with the legends, man. But obviously, just like up top, nobody's ever breaking Jerry Rice's record. And speaking of records, at number 5, a player made so many crazy plays this season, he set an unbreakable NFL record. It's never happened in the history of the NFL! The record that Duran Bland was chasing had been held for decades by a legend named Eric Allen, who's not only known as the king of pick sixes, according to the record books, he had the most in a single season with four. But as you can see by the grainy footage, that was years ago. This season, what Bland was doing had people thinking he was about to make history. Because now, one... Jones gets it out, Barkley, got hit, fumbled right in the air, and it flies into the hands for a touchdown of Duran Bland! Not two. Second down, a lot of time. Jones just can't find it. Comes back across the field. This time he pays the price. Deron Bland, pick six. But three pick sixes within the first couple weeks had everybody keeping their eyes on him. Stafford sees it, fires one, intercepted. It's another pick six. Deron Bland has his third of the year. Then he was close to tying the record only a few weeks later when this happened. Got time here, and he throws, and it's intercepted. It's Deron Bland again. Bland looking for another pick six, and he's got it. It's his fourth of the year. So at that point, the man was intercepting everything, and I assumed, just to make sure he didn't get the record, nobody else would even risk throwing towards it until the very next game. Second and ten. There it is. This is history. If Bland can take it the distance, this will be the record. Bland for the fifth time has a pick six. It's never happened in the history of the NFL. Yeah, while breaking an already legendary record, he set his own that'll never be broken. Man's goaded for that. But at least during his plays, he only broke records and those quarterbacks' hearts. Not their faces, like at number four, when a player turned the NFL into the UFC. On the strip. Second and nine, second quarter begins. Reese Hall. Hurling for the first down. That was supposed to just be a hurdle, and it turned into a crazy flying knee to the dome. I already know Joe Rogan was somewhere watching it like... <laughs> and as you can see by the player who became a victim, that man was out cold. But something even colder was number three, where Tyree Kill's craziest play gave his opponents free points. See, man's used to be on the Chiefs, so when this play happened, things got a little suspicious. To him. <laughs> now that's ridiculous, man. A catch from Tyreek turning into a Chiefs touchdown when he don't even play for him anymore? It literally had fans calling him a double agent. But at least his mistake didn't cost his team too much. After all, it was only the second quarter. Unlike number two, where one of the craziest plays this season came with no time left in the game. Zone. It uh -oh. is he got it. In the it's with the Broncos down over a touchdown and only enough time for one play left, Something absolutely crazy had to happen. Wilson looking for a miracle. And it uh -oh. is he got it. It in the air. And oh, oh, the my oh my god! What the? That ball got tipped by more dudes than a hot girl at Hooters. And it was still caught for a touchdown. Regardless though, they couldn't get too hyped because they still needed a two-point conversion to keep their chances alive. Be disciplined here for Washington. Wilson to the end zone. And they choked. That was definitely heartbreaking. But it was nowhere near as emotional as the number one craziest play of the season. September 11th, 2023 was the day of that emotional play. Everybody was already in their feelings because the game was taking place in New York, where years earlier on that exact date, the city was hit with deadly attacks. But this ain't history class, and today was supposed to be different. Fans were anticipating Aaron Rodgers' debut with their team. Everybody knew the moment was special. He even ran onto the field while representing our country with the flag, which had the whole stadium hyped. Until just a few minutes into the game, on just Rogers' fourth play with his new team, this happened. 
Protection breaks down and time runs out. Down goes Rodgers in the sack for Leonard Floyd. The former first round pick of the Bears and now Rodgers sits down. No, he's, he's, he's down, he's down. No. Now, after seeing Rodgers leave without being able to walk, then not returning to the game had everyone stunned. But despite all the focus being on if Rodgers' injury would keep him out the rest of the night, end his season, or even kill the rest of his career, the Jets had to put all their emotions aside to try and win this game. And after hours of the score being close, eventually it was tied up in overtime where one play finally gave Jets fans something to be happy about. Sam Martin corrals the snap, it's a short punt, Gibson on the return, near side, I don't see any flags, Gibson inside the 30. Hits the Jets, and he's going to go! Jets win it! Touchdown, rookie Xavier Gibson! Game over! Man, a walk-off to win the game? That not only gave his team something to be hyped about, it not only gave the stadium something to cheer about, and it wasn't even only dedicated to Rodgers going down. That play gave the entire city a New York hope, so not a single play this season in my eyes could have had an impact like that one.